What is Fiddler? Uh, that's Eric Lawrence. So Eric was working on uh, Microsoft Clipart team, and he realized when people would order clip art and try to download it, they'd have issues and call in for support. And there wasn't a great tool to support people trying to help you or to troubleshoot web problems. So he built a tracing tool specifically for HTTP and HTTPS, which I'll show you. Uh, I'm really impressed with Eric. I met him a year ago. Uh, he did not know HTTP. He did not know .NET. He did not know C Sharp. And he decided to tackle all of those at once and write Fiddler on the side while he was a full-time employee at Microsoft. So I just find that amazing. He was acquired by Telerik in 2012. Uh, so it's now owned by Progress. I have two links there. So the main Fiddler link, and like I said, there's two different products now. So Fiddler Everywhere is Progress. They basically scrapped and started over and they wrote a cross-platform version of Fiddler Everywhere. So in the past... It only ran on Windows. Now you can get Windows, Mac, or Linux. That's the cross-platform version. That is a subscription, just so you know. Fiddler Classic is what I've used forever. It's on Windows. I'm gonna use that primarily for this talk, mostly because they're adding to Fiddler everywhere. I mean, each release it gets better and adds on things, but there's still some advanced techniques I'm gonna to show today that are not in Fiddler everywhere yet. Uh, so that's why I'm going to be showing it in Classic. At the very end, I'll go and show what Fiddler Everywhere looks like. So how does Fiddler work? Uh, Fiddler is a proxy. So what happens is I'm just going to show you a before and after. I'm going to open up my browser. And I'm just going to go into the settings here. If I open up the proxy settings, we can say that there's right now there's no proxy server. So now what will happen is if I go in and open up Fiddler, as soon as I open up Fiddler, it tells Windows that it is available as a proxy. In other words, if you send traffic to me, I can handle HTTP and HTTPS traffic. So if I go back into Edge here, I'm going to go, let me open this up again. If I go back into sometimes I've shut that off to see it. So we'll see if it do it one more time here. So now that Windows has told it, Edge should pick that up automatically. So all the modern browsers pick up that there's now a proxy in place and say so they will route traffic through that. So if I go in here and we look at the IP address, so if you I should have wore the shirt tonight. There's no place like 127.0.0.1. That is the IP address for your own machine. So essentially what it's doing is Fiddler started up and it says, I'm going to run on port 8888 on this local IP address. So now programs that want to use a proxy will start to route their traffic through Fiddler. And so that's how Fiddler actually intercepts traffic. So again, what Fiddler's point is, it's going to watch traffic between the browser and the server so that we can use it for, at first I'm going to show just tracing and troubleshooting, but you can actually modify traffic as well. I'll talk about this a little bit at the end. It becomes important, like I said, all the modern browsers know uh, that proxies that exist. They'll ask the system for the proxy settings, so they, they should all pick up that Fiddler is there and running. If you have certain tools, like I'm an ASP.NET developer, I traditionally I run ASP.NET on my development laptop. I will use Fiddler to watch traffic from the browser to my uh, IIS ASP.NET server. But then I'm often making third-party calls for HTTP services, REST services, whatever. Those aren't automatically picked up by, by Fiddler. And I'll show later how you can do that. But essentially, .NET code by default is not looking at the proxy config. So if you're ever trying to do traces and you don't see the traffic in Fiddler, you need to focus on are there proxy settings in this client or tool that let it direct traffic to Fiddler. Mm -hmm.